The subcommittee is meeting today to hear the testimony on the, on the skills gap facing America's workforce. <clears throat> in the past three years, have proven anything is that America is an extremely resilient workforce. Through the pandemic, we prevailed. Nurses found creative ways to assist patients through telehealth. And truckers showed up day in and day out to get food delivered to America's kitchen tables. I'm proud of our resilience. With it, America can overcome any hardship. But our workforce faces another challenge today, the skills gap. Simply put, the skills gap is a growing disconnect between employer needs and employee competencies. Nearly 10 million jobs remain unfilled in the United States. These jobs require in-demand skills, and our workforce system has failed to provide these skills, these skills to American workers. Without swift action, the skills gap is in danger of becoming the skills canyon. <clears throat> there are many reasons for the skills gap, but only with a workforce system that's effectively reskilling and upskilling individuals can we begin to address these issues. Innovations and a fresh approach is needed for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act to achieve its potential and equip more job seekers with the skills needed in the modern economy. Employers across the country are searching for talent. Good paying jobs are available for those who possess the right skills. Yet too few Americans are upgrading their skills through the workforce system. Only about one third of those participating in the way are en engaged in any type of skills development. Less than 100,000 individuals nationwide completed their programs in the most recent year. We're not going to close the skills gap if we stay on this trajectory. Skill development must be a, a greater priority in the system, but government acting alone cannot meet the historic challenges facing our workforce. Private sector involvement and investment are essential to align skills development programs with industry needs and to give workers hands-on experience. Employee-led and work-based learning must be a focal point in the law. When it comes to skills development, employers must be in the driver's seat. And while skills and competencies, competencies uh, became, become the new currency in the labor market, we cannot continue to support programs in Wyoa that are failing to deliver the skills our economy needs and demands. Reforms are needed to ensure all eligible programs lead to good outcomes. The priority of way are must be to connect job seekers with job granters. At this critical moment, Congress cannot simply double down on the status quo. More taxpayer dollars will not magically fix the problems that are being identified in our workforce system. Today's hearing provides an opportunity for us to hear from experts on these issues and identify solutions together. This is an area where we have a lot of bipartisan agreement. In fact, back in 2014, we found a deal that worked for both sides of the aisle legislators, regulators, employers, employees managed to, in countless talks to responsibly outline a system to connect workers and employers. Those discussions resulted in Wyoming's passage in 2014. At that time, the American government looked very similar to, to what's happened today. A Democrat was in control of the White House, Democrats were in control of the Senate, and Republicans were in control of the House. I hope with good faith discussions, once again, we can reach an agreement that reforms and strengthens Wyoa, delivering results for the job seekers, job creators, and taxpayers. With that, I yield to the ranking.